everyone and welcome to episode number 31 of the Karen Knits podcast. My name is Karen and I'm coming to you from South Central Pennsylvania where I live, where I work, where I knit and crochet and get into all kinds of other crafty shenanigans. So it's later in the afternoon today. It's a nice day. It's a little bit of a breeze out. Uh, it's nice and overcast and cloudy and the temperatures are coming down. It's a little bit cooler out and I, I love that. This is my favorite time of year. I love, I love the autumn. So this week I do not have any finished objects to show you. I was hoping I would have a finished object, but it, I didn't quite make it. And I'll explain, had things gone in my favor, I probably would have had, but I'll, I'll explain that in just a few minutes. And so no finished objects and I spent most of my time this week working on one work in progress in particular and I did a little bit on my other work in progress. So without further ado, let's look at my works in progress. So my first work in progress is my Tenya sweater and that's continues to live in my fringe supply, fringe supply field bag. And I only added a little bit to this project. So Tenya is a sweater patterned by Caitlin Hunter. I am using Quince and Co. Turn for this and the colorway is terracotta. And I'm using three and a half millimeter needles or US size three. And I cast this on a while back and I'm still still making progress, getting closer to getting closer to being done. Not quite close, but we're working on it. But I only did a tiny tiny bit on this. I'm currently working on the back portion. I've separated for the sleeves or the armholes and I'm working on the back. And all I've done are these these few rows here. That's it. Just a. That's a sad sounding little car. <laughs> anyway, so I've got very little work done on on my Tenya sweater this week, but I've spent pretty much all my time working on my other other work in progress. So Tenya got a tiny bit of attention as soon as my the next work in progress I'll show you as soon as I have that one all finished and sent off to its recipient I'll get back on to Tenya and my scrap wrap and start doing a lot more a lot more work on those because this 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 second work in progress of mine has um, a very tight timeline on it so as I mentioned last week I just found out a little over a week ago that a former colleague of mine and his wife are expecting a baby girl in the end of September. That's right. <laughs> I want to have this done for for them before, I'm hoping before the baby arrives. I'll have to mail it to them. They don't live too far away from me, but I won't have the opportunity to drive up to visit them between now and the likely baby due date. So. I decided to start a crochet baby blanket for them and the pattern is called bouncy ball baby blanket I have to say that slowly so I don't trip over myself it's the bouncy ball baby blanket by Debbie Smith I'm using a five millimeter hook or a US size H and I had a bit of a mishap is not the right I had a bit of a stumbling block with this that's the better word for it I was planning on doing the blanket either six squares by six squares in size or seven by seven depending upon how much yarn I had and so I did the first I did the middle of the first 18 squares and then did up all the rest so I got all of this done and so there's 20 
squares here. So I did in batches of six because I wanted to do six, six by six or seven by seven. I was going to start with six by six. And if that didn't work, then I was going to up it to seven by, or if I had more yarn, I was going to up it to seven by seven. So I did up all of these squares and then I ran out of the white yarn. So it was an old skein of yarn I had that I bought from a friend of mine back when we lived in Maine. So this was pre-2012 that I got this yarn. So I went to Walmart and the yarn that, the white yarn I was using was a Mainstays brand white yarn, which is the Walmart brand. And so I went back to Walmart and thought, okay, it was a nice bright white you know, white, white should be white, white yarn should be white yarn, you'd think. Um, so I went and bought another skein of white yarn with the plan of continuing on and adding on to the next, the next 16 squares, because I'd already done up two. So I get the white yarn, I do up a square, here's the first, the original ones, and here is the other white. They are not the same. No way, no how. And so I sat there and thought, well, maybe if I do them on a diagonal and do one row with the original white and one with the second white, but it's just, it's either the contrast just wasn't working for me and actually when I was looking at them side by side it it bugged me so I knew that there was no use trying to do it and stop with using half the squares in the old white half the squares in the new white and I knew that I wouldn't be happy with the finished product I knew it would I knew it would bother me if the colors have been completely different that would have been fine like way way different but they're just when I laid them side by side to me one of the colors looks dingy like one of the whites looks dingy compared to the other white and I that's like I just I wasn't happy with it but then the thought of undoing all of the ones I had done thought, well that's kind of wasteful so I sat there scratching my head about this for quite a while so I ended up I decided well I'm just going to redo or start over. I was going to put aside the eight of the 20 squares I'd already done. And I thought I'll start over and I'll make 36 more squares. So happily crocheting away, I did up all the little middles. I ended up with, oh, I forgot to bring it over here with me. I have a ball of the, the purple yarn that's maybe about that big. It's, it's not much of the pink is left. So initially I was thinking I'll do six by six so maybe I'll up it to seven by seven. I'm not going to have enough of the pink left over. So I made 36 little pink center parts. So I just did up the circle part and then I went back with the second ball or the, the new ball of white yarn I bought at Walmart. I went back and did the borders around them. So now I have, let me get all these guys over here. So now I have 36, a stack of 36 of these guys. So I have a plus 20 of the original <laughs> So I've got actually 56 of these squares. So I have these 36 squares with the original, the, the pink dot and the new white yarn. So I have all the squares that I want to need. I don't have enough pink to do more. So I have enough of these guys. So enough of them to make a six by six blanket. And 
the next thing I the next thing I have to do with them is I have to stitch all the squares together. All the ends are tucked in except so put that down. All of the ends have been woven in except this one ending yarn from the square. And when I when I stitch them together, what I'll do is I'll just stitch them together and I'm just going to run the thread the tail I'll just weave the tail in as I'm whip stitching the blanket together I'm not going to do a join as you go crochet I don't really like the the heavier ridge when you crochet the squares together doing whip stitch is just as for me just as fast as actually crocheting the squares together and I prefer to have I'll show you next week once they're sewn together but what I do is I'll put the the right sides together and I will just do the joining only using the the one stitch from the back stitch or the back half of the crochet stitch and I'll leave this one I'm not sure if you can actually see that very well and I'll leave half of the stitch um, unstitched so when I do have it opened up you will see a small a small pattern in the um, in the seaming and I'll show you exactly what I mean with that when I show you the the blanket next week once I've got some of this sewn together so the only problem is that I I need to sew all those squares together once they're all sewn together then I'm going to do either a single double crochet all around the entire blanket one or two times that's all the white yarn <laughs> I have left um, of the second skein or the the newest skein that I bought so I have to make a run out to Walmart this afternoon to pick up a prescription and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another ball of the white yarn or another big skein of the white yarn and I will use that a little bit of that to do to do the border all the way around everything and I find that just the, doing the border finishes it finish finishes it off nicely I might what I might do is I might try to do like a one round of single crochet in white and then I'm going to take what I have left of the pink yarn and I will see if I can make it all the way around with the pink yarn to do one one small accent round on the finished blanket. If I if there's enough yarn, I'll go one one time around. If there's not enough yarn, I'll mumble <laughs> a little bit and I'll I'll pull the pink out and I'll use it for more little middles of those middles for the squares so I'm expecting that I should have the blanket complete completely finished next week and I'll be able to show you my finished object and then I can package it all up and send it off in the mail either next Saturday or next Monday and that should give her give it plenty of time to go 50 or I think it's only 50 or 60 miles up the road from where we live. So I'll get it in the mail after I've had a chance to show it to you guys next week. So then the question comes up, what am I going to do with 20 of these squares? Because 5x4 is not going to, it's too small. And I don't have a yarn to do, a coordinating yarn or anything to do the, the border with. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do with those is because there's 20, um, I'm going to go through my other acrylic yarn scraps and I'm just going to do different combinations of colors. So some of my scraps, I have some light yellows, I have some light um, blues, some kind of sage greens. What I'll probably do is I'm going to make more of the little center parts and then I have a cream colored yarn that I think will be enough of a contrast between the cream and this kind of bluish grayish white that I have and so what I think I'll do is I will do the borders 
I'll do a variety of centers with whatever other scrap yarns I have the light yarn the the light pink or not light pink light yellow and light green I'll do more of the dots or the bouncy ball parts and then I'll do more of the the borders and the cream and then I'll just do do them on a diagonal so that I can use up the 20 squares I already have plus add add some new ones in there so once I get this afghan done I think I'm gonna put the those 20 squares I think I'm just gonna put them in timeout <laughs> for a little while and get back to working on my 10 year sweater and get that done because I really do want to get Tenya finished so that I can I can wear it so I'm no well I did have a stash acquisition <laughs> since I last talked to you but I have crocheted everything but that up and I'll be going out this afternoon and buying another another skein of that white yarn again so I will be bringing a little bit, I have brought and will be bringing a little bit of, of stash in, but it, it has a purpose already. It's, it's earmarked and, and ready to go. So, although the other option is maybe I will do, use the white to do the dots in the middle and maybe I'll use the green and the yellow as the outside border. Stay tuned. Stay tuned to see what I end up doing with that. I'll probably come back to that in a few weeks again, but it does make for a nice, quick, easy project. Um, it's nice and mindless once you get the pattern stored up in your head. I can just happily crochet away while I'm watching TV, so it works out really quick and easy to do. And otherwise, what else? It's been busy with work. I've we're finished up the third week back at school now, starting into week number four, back to university. So classes are going well. Um, where I'm doing my classes either completely online, teaching them completely online for some of them, and one of them I'm doing with Zoom. So that's, that's going well. And what else? This past week on Thursday, was my husband and I, it was our wedding anniversary. So we both took the day off work and we just relaxed and we enjoyed each other's company for the day. Slept in a bit, puttered around, um, went out to a nice little restaurant for lunch. It was a, um, a tea room. So it was really nice. My husband's not a huge tea fan. Uh, so we went and we had the lunch special, so it was a little sandwich and a little bit of soup and some scones with tea. So it was really nice. Expensive, but it was a really nice lunch. Then we kind of just relaxed for the afternoon. We had a couple quick errands we had to run in the later afternoon, and then we had plans to go out for supper. So I went, dropped off some stuff at the post office. We went to the pharmacy and picked up a prescription for my husband. Wish the synch they had synchronized a little bit better because now I have a prescription to pick up today. He had one on Thursday. So <laughs> that the timing didn't quite work out perfectly for that. Um, we refueled my car and it wasn't running properly. So we kind of got worried. We nixed our original plans for where we wanted to go out for supper and we just went to another restaurant that was right close by. And then we limped my car back home with that we'll just take it to the garage on Saturday morning. So it was running really rough and we went and picked up the prescription and the car was off for a few minutes while my husband was in. And then when we came back we started it up and it was still running running very sluggish sluggish and rough. So we came up to a, a red light and we saw some smoke coming out of, out of, from under the hood on the driver's side of the car. So we're just like, oh crap. Pulled into the parking lot. We were right by a strip mall. So we pulled into the parking lot and we sat there like, oh crap. Don't, I, we do not, do not want the car to die. <laughs> I like my little car or my little SUV. So we thought, we'll just let it sit there and think about what it's doing. <laughs> 
shut everything off, looked under the hood. There were no flames or anything there. So we went in. There was a little restaurant in that strip mall. So we went there and had supper. Not what our original plan was, but it was. we got to go out for a nice supper anyway. Came back to the car, went to go to the garage that we've recently started going to. He's on vacation for a couple weeks. Won't be back into the shop until I think the 15th or the 17th of September. So we thought that's too far away. And so we took the car home and by that point it was driving fine. There's no more smoke coming out of it, thank goodness. But it was driving fine. So we went and parked the car just left it parked outside our our home and we thought well we'll just go to the garage a different garage we'll just go they have um drop in visiting on saturday mornings and i'm overdue for an oil change so i thought well maybe that was part of it and so they took a look over the car and there they found there was nothing wrong with it they did the oil change um i was due they always say with your oil change, it's so many months or so many miles. Well, in the last six months, I'm nowhere close to the number of miles just because nobody's going anywhere. So, but it was well beyond when the time frame. So they did the oil change. They topped up the fluids and everything. And the only thing they think it could have been, because no indicator lights came on, so they don't think it was anything major. There was nothing that showed up, nothing looked wrong with the car. So they just think that when we refueled the car, because it had got fairly low, that it had just, when I refueled it, it had just stirred up stuff from the bottom of the gas tank. And that that was, because of that, that had, was the, the, some of the gunk was, that's a technical term, <laughs> some of the gunk was going through the, um, through the system. I know nothing about mechanics. Um, was going through the system and that's what was making it run rough and then there might have been something that a little bit of something that blocked something <laughs> again technical terms something that was there was a blockage somewhere in there and that that's what was causing the smoke and then when we stopped it and started it up again it had worked loose and it was fine so they took it for a little test drive it behaved perfectly fine for them they couldn't see anything or find anything that was wrong with it, so they're just attributed, attributing it to just something from when I refueled the car. So I'm going to get into the habit of refueling far more frequently um, without and not let it to go like under a quarter tank again. I'll make sure I'm getting it. I'll make sure I'm refueling when I'm getting down to a half a tank instead of letting it get that low again just to prevent it from potentially happen happening again. That's not to say it won't happen another time when I refuel it, but I won't worry about it if it's not a big deal. So that was our adventure. So we never did get out to um, where we wanted to go for supper. We'll have to try that again another, another time. But otherwise, that's been about all the excitement around here this past week. Work keeps, works a going, which is good and a little adventure with the, the car on our anniversary. So we had, a, we, just, we had a nice day. We came home after supper and watched, watched a movie and just had a nice relaxing evening. And yeah, so that's about it. So I'll let you guys get going. A little bit short, uh, marginally shorter episode today. Um, so hopefully next week I will have a finished object to show you. Hopefully I'll have the, be able to show you the bouncy ball baby blanket all finished cross your fingers that I get that all done by next week um, I'm gonna start this evening or this afternoon once we're back home um, we gotta get a couple groceries too I'll I'll get going on I'll get I'll get going on stitching the squares together um, once we're back home afterwards this afternoon and I'll see how much I get done over the next couple days it's like I say, it's, it was a quick project. If you are someone who likes to crochet, it's a really quick project. The squares come together really quickly and it looks really cute when it's done. You'll, you'll see it all completed next week. So on that note, I'll let you guys go 
and I'll see you again next week. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye now.